Frankfurter was the world's biggest busybody, was he not? He knew and talked to everybody, whether they were in courts, in politics, in business. Nothing was off. Guys, guys who should, by our lights today, should not have been within 10 blocks of the court, used to be in his chambers talking to him. I mean, uh, just, he was a raconteur, a man about town. And, you know, Elman wasn't any of these things, really. So, it, in a way, it was, uh, you know, the devil in the deep blue, but it was a lot deeper than that. Uh, Frank Furter had a by invitation only seminar at Harvard. And uh, invitation depended mainly on grades. And Phil was invited into the seminar, and that's where the relationship between Frank Furter and Phil began. Um, uh, Phil remembers himself as being completely silent. Um, I have trouble believing that entirely because <laughs> Frank Furter took a shine to him. And um, Frank Furter, um, Frank Furter uh, later took him then as his clerk. And there's a story there about how that happened. He was originally going to be a different Supreme Court judge's clerk, but he ended up with Frank Furter. And, um, and um, he was his only clerk for two years um, during World War II. So that would be uh, 1941 to 1943. And that's um, rather extraordinary. Um, part of it relates, of course, to the war. Um, but what was extraordinary? That it was only two years or that, that it, it was, was two years? Two years right? That it was two that years. That it was two years, yes. That it was yeah. two years is, is, is unusual. Um, I think he was his Standard only is one year. One year, yeah. and I think he he was Frankfurter's only two-year clerk. Okay. In my okay. Opinion. And of course, Frankfurter um, had no children. Right. Um, and during those years um, of war, uh, the uh, being a Supreme Court judge was um, only a part-time occupation, as you suggested. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, those were years when Frankfurter um, apparently went to war. Yeah. And um, he had, as you say, during the New Deal, he'd been appointed during the New Deal, and he had sent student on student into the New Deal. So, in fact, so much so that um, William Luxemburg and others have talked about Frankfurter's hot dogs. You know, they right. became known as Frankfurter's right. hot dogs, and a generation of right. Harvard law students went into uh, government. Right. Government became um, government lawyering became an attractive, exciting right. area to practice in, just as in the 20s it had been Wall Street. They were, th these guys were all over town. Uh, they lived in houses together, uh, seven and eight and ten to a house, and the houses became individually famous, and they would have huge parties all the time, and the women were, th were thronging there, and they were doing some of the most interesting work in the New, in the New Deal period. My most immediate concern is in carrying out the purposes of the great work program. The first objective is to put men and women now on the relief rolls to work. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. Welcome.